Hi, so we're going to take a look at constraints in Inventor in their 2D sketch mode. Uh, so my name is Frank Carmody and we're going to get started. So let's click uh, a down arrow. We're going to get a new part file. Okay, we're going to do create 2D sketch and we're going to make a new 2D sketch. Okay, so this is our constraint area right here and constraints are, are really important to understand in Inventor because of the fact that they, they affect the way that drawings act in unpredictable ways if you don't understand them. And even unpredictable ways when you do understand them. And uh, it really makes uh, the workflow in Inventor be such that if something gets out of hand, if you're drawing a 2D, to, 2D shape and it gets out of hand, sometimes the best thing to do is just to redraw it and redimension it and it's going to take less time for you to do that and you'll see that in just a few minutes so okay so let's go ahead and um, uh, uh, save our drawing that's the very first thing okay so if I click the save button up here notice it takes me out of 2d sketch mode I had to click OK I'm going to um, call this lesson 4 I'm going to click save Okay, now to get now notice that I don't have any grid lines, right? I can know that tells me I'm not in sketch mode. Also, if I look in my explorer, you can tell I'm not in sketch mode. Okay, I, sketch one is not highlighted here. Okay. Also, I have no sketch tools and no sketch tabs. So to get back into sketch mode, I have to cl double click a sketch, which is in this case a sketch one. Okay, so let's get into just applying some constraints here. Okay, so we have a circle. We have a line. Okay, and we're going to make them coincident. Okay, so that means that um, they're going to occupy the same point. Okay, so we're going to click on the coincident constraint, click our circle, click our line, right click OK. And now you can see that that line and circle, that line is locked onto the central point of the circle, just like that. It can't be moved el elsewhere, right? Even if I move the circle, even if the circle gets bigger or smaller, line moves, it stays right on that point. Okay. So now let's take the example of two lines. Okay. Two lines that are uh, two line segments that are on different lines. And we want to make them collinear. That means we want them to occupy the same line. Okay, so we click the collinear constraint. We click line one, click line two, and now notice right click OK. And now notice they now occupy the same line right there. Okay. Uh, now, let's say that we wanted these to be vertical. Okay, so we're going to skip these two for now. Uh, let's say that we wanted these to be vertical or horizontal. So you wanted them to be horizontal. We could go ahead and click horizontal. Uh, let's say you wanted them to be vertical. Now watch what's going to happen. Oh, I over-constrained. Okay, so I clicked on the vertical constraint. Things cannot be both horizontal and vertical. Okay, so it says adding this constraint will over-constrain the sketch. Okay, this is a this is an error you're going to get very often. Okay, so let's take a look at why that happened. Uh, because on the sketch, I'm going to click cancel. On the sketch, you don't see anything that would make you think you couldn't make them vertical. So if you came into a sketch that was already existing and you clicked there, you wouldn't really know. Okay, so how can we find out what constraints have already been applied to lines, uh, to objects inside of Inventor? Well, we right click, click OK to get out of the tool right click and show all constraints. At this point what happens is all the constraints that have been applied um, in the drawing will show up. Okay, So here we have our collinear constraint as well as our horizontal constraint and then we would know why we got that error because it obviously two things a line segment cannot be both vertical and horizontal. Okay, so let's keep going here. Uh, next, we're going to, do, going to do cocentric. Okay, so we're going to make two circles. Okay, click the cocentric constraint. We click circle one, click circle two, and now they are cocentric. Right click OK to get out of the tool. And now notice that even if I move one, the other moves with it because now it's cocentrically, it's, it's constrained to be concentric. Concentric, not cocentric. <laughs> Okay, so uh, next we're going to do, um, we're going to lock one in place. So let's go ahead and we're going to take a line, line one, okay. We're going to make line two, okay. And let's say I don't, when I make these two collinear, let's say I don't want, I want to keep the, um, the angle of one of the lines, okay. What I can do is I can use this lock constraint. And 
I want to undo. I just locked the circle there. Okay, you want to make sure that nothing is selected when you do this. So we click lock. We click on one of the lines. Okay, now that line is locked. Okay, if I right click and I do show all constraints. Okay, notice that we have a lock icon. Okay. Right click, show all constraints. Okay, notice I have a lock icon on there. Okay, so now if we go ahead and we make these two collinear, watch what happens. So I click the locked line, I click the other line, and notice the locked line doesn't move at all. Now what I can do is right click OK to get out of the tool, and then I can go back in and actually delete that locked constraint. Okay, now in Inventor there's a there's kind of an odd uh, um, interface thing here. So let's do show all constraints. Let's say I want to um, I want to delete a constraint. Okay, see this X right here? You might think that if I click that X that that constraint has been deleted. That is not the case. Okay, so if I right click and do show all constraints again, you'll see that constraint comes right back. What I have to do is I have to actually be out of the tool, right click on the constraint and click delete. Okay. Also, I, I right click and then click again uh, out of habit. You can also, if you want to delete a constraint, you can also right click and then drag to the head, right click and drag to the heads up menu and then release the right click as well. Um, okay, so there we have it. We have our, we did our lock constraint. So we've done, um, we've done coincident, we've done collinear, we've done concentric, we've done lock. Uh, now let's go ahead and do parallel. So we have two lines, we want to make them parallel. By the way, I can double click at the end of a line to end that line segment, or double click the end of a line segment to end the line segment. Okay, so I um, then I can go to my parallel. Whoops, these may already be parallel. Um, I click line one, click line two. Oop, already exists. Okay, so this brings us up to another interesting point of inventor. As you're drawing, I'm going to click OK to get out of the tool, right click to show all constraints. As you're drawing, inventor will add in constraints. So as, I'm, as I drew those two lines, Inventor automatically added in the constraints. So let's go ahead and delete one of the lines and see what happened here. Okay, so I had line one. Now I go to draw line two. I click, drag. Now notice, notice as I, as I draw this line, notice what happens when I become increasingly parallel. Oops, there it is. Okay, now see there's an icon next to line one. And then to the right of my mouse, to the lower right, just below, on the right hand side, just below my mouse um, crosshairs, you'll see there's a parallel uh, icon. So notice that happens right when I get to that point. Now, I could be, um, now notice that if it's uh, per perpendicular, the same thing will happen. Okay, if I go to the horizontal, notice that it will happen again on, an, on it'll actually, it's adding in a parallel uh, a constraint right now if I were to click it would be parallel to this line right here for some reason it's adding it in okay now these rules get are very complicated uh, so it becomes become it becomes a little bit hard to predict how inventor will choose to apply these constraints I, there are rules but they're just so complicated as to be um, unfathomable sometimes so so what you want to do as you're drawing, you want to watch out for this. So as I'm drawing, I want to watch for those icons and make sure I'm not adding in constraints that I don't want. Now, in some cases, it's going to save me time. In other cases, it's, it's something that I don't want. And so I would go slightly off of parallel to make sure that I don't get that constraint added. OK, so in this case, I drew them slightly out of parallel. The constraint was not added automatically. And so I can go back in and add it um, myself. In this case, we're going to make these parallel just to, just for practice. So I click the parallel constraint, made the two lines parallel. Now in the next case, though, what I'm going to do, want to do, let's say I make two lines. Okay, I don't watch for the icon. Okay, so now they've been automatically constrained as parallel. I go in. I I want to add a perpendicular constraint and watch what happens. I get an error. It's saying it over constrains the sketch, right? Um, and that's because when I drew it, I wasn't careful to watch. Um, to watch for this automatically added parallel constraint. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete that second line because we want to practice our perpendicular constraint. Okay, so we go ahead, uh, we click perpendicular, click line one, click line two, and they are now constrained to be perpendicular. Show all constraints. Okay, so perpendicular. Now it's interesting because I I what didn't mean to do this, but watch what happened. It did add in a parallel constraint, and notice that it made it parallel to this line down here. 
So as I was drawing, I didn't notice that these two lines were parallel. Inventor obviously does and added in that parallel constraint. So you have to be really careful and that show all constraints becomes really useful in a complicated drawing. Okay. All right, so, um, so let's go ahead. We're going to make a line here. Okay, I'll watch out for any icons that might be lurking. Uh, and I'm going to make this line horizontal. So I click the horizontal constraint. Okay, that's our practice for that. Uh, let's go ahead. We're going to make uh, we're going to make a um, this line segment uh, perpendicular. Oops! And look what happened. Let me show you that again. So as I was drawing, I accidentally made this line parallel to these two lines. Uh, Inventor automatically added the constraint. Okay, now when I go to make the line perpen or vertical, I go ahead, I click the vertical constraint, I click on the line, and now these lines are vertical as well. Okay, so I click Control Z to undo, right click, show all constraints, and I want to delete this, um, this constraint that these are uh, parallel. Okay, now I can go back in, do the vertical constraint on this line, I don't get any unnecessary movement or unwanted movement in my other lines. Okay. So let's go ahead and we're going to um, use the hand to kind of move our sketch up. Okay, so I've done all of these constraints so far. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead onto the tangent constraint. So I need a circle and a line. Now this line could be in another shape. It could be somewhere else in your drawing. Um, I'm really being pretty inefficient in my drawing here. So if I do a line, it's click, pull the mouse, double click, to end the line segment. Now I'm going to use the tangent constraint. I need to select a circle and a line. Now those two are tangent. Right click OK to get out of the tool. And now they are uh, constrained to be in tangent with each other. OK, these, these uh, last three constraints are, are they're, these next two constraints are a little bit um, iffy to use. Uh, they, you might find a space where they're valuable. Uh, it's, it, they're going to be very rare, though. OK, so the first one has to do with curves of a spline. So if we have two splines that are, they have to be really right next to each other. Um, so if I have two splines, let's say, okay, that are not right next to each other. Now notice if I try to do this now, okay, so if I try to use this smooth constraint now, it may not work. So I click the two and I get an error, fail to, const to create constraint. So I have to right click OK. I have to move them really close. In fact, kind of on top of each other. They have to intersect. Okay. Um, they, aren't, they aren't connected, but they have to intersect. All right. uh, so let's go ahead. I'm going to do the um, constraint again. Fail to create constraint again. Let's make them actually intersect. I have a lot of problems with this, with this constraint. So let's say that we go ahead and actually make them connect. Um, so now they're, they're literally, their endpoints are actually connected. And let's try the constraint one more time. And now we get it. Okay, so if the endpoints are actually connected, then you can do that smooth constraint. And notice what it does for you is it creates this continuous curve there on your spline uh, without connecting the two uh, as one, one continuous spline. Okay, um, so we did our, uh, our smooth constraint. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and use this... Um, symmetric constraint. So basically what we need here in this case is we need three lines. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to make our three lines. And make one up. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead, we're going to apply the constraint. So the first two we're going to do two lines, our two side lines, and then our third line. And notice what that does. So now it's applied the constraint. I click OK. Now if I go ahead and move these lines around, notice what happens. The three lines are always going to be at the same angle around the middle line. So, um, or the two lines are going to always be at the same angle around that central line. So I can go ahead and move them around and they'll maintain that, that this angle one here and angle two here will remain identical. Let's do show all constraints. Whoops. Show all constraints. Okay, so that's my uh, my symmetric constraint. And finally, let's do the equ equals constraint or the equivalent constraint. So this has different meanings depending on the shape. In the, in the case of the line, it means the length of the line. So let's go ahead and make these equal. Okay, notice they went to equal length. Okay, let's do it on a circle. Okay, so I have two circles. Let's make these equivalent. 
Okay, so in the case of the circle, it's a radius. Okay, so it will react differently on different shapes. Okay, so that is, uh, those are using the constraint tools. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at, so we talked about how um, Inventor adds in uh, constraints automatically as we're drawing. Okay, and this is true for, um, for our uh, shapes as well. So if we make a rectangle, let's go ahead and make a rectangle. And let's go ahead and do uh, show all constraints. Okay, notice that Inventor, a rectangle is just four lines. Okay, it's a closed shape containing four lines, quadrilateral, right? Uh, that um, has these constraints applied to it. So you can actually create your own shapes using constraints that will act like this. So let's take the case of, um, of um, oops, okay, so you'll notice that a couple of uh, constraints were added in as I was drawing there. Um, so you notice that these added in. So notice already I would have problems. So it added in perpendicular constraints here. Okay, perpendicular constraint here, parallel constraint here. So as I was drawing it, added in numerous constraints that would have gotten in my way later on. Okay, so if I tried to do what I was, what I'm about to do without deleting all these constraints, I would have run into problems. Let's say that I want all of these lines to be of equivalent length. Okay, so I go ahead, I just start adding them around. These equivalent constraints. Okay, didn't work out how I thought, right? So I wanted these all to be equivalent lengths, but it turns out that they are not. Okay, so let's uh, let's go ahead and right click, show all constraints. Okay, so the method that you're going to want to use to do this is. Um, Okay, so you can play around with this equivalent constraint uh, tool and uh, you should have good results uh, after you get used to it. Um, okay, so uh, uh, that one our constraint tutorial and good luck.